Hello, everyone. Welcome to our very first issue of the Codecast Weekly Topics in Code. This weekly cast is made especially for those of you who want to learn coding, but have never got the time or effort, or simply the trick of it. Come and join us every Wednesday when we release new casts and learn to code. I'm Dr. Lee, your reliable coding instructor. Most of you are aware that Valentine's Day is in this week. Why not we take this chance to have a little fun and make a small gift to your loved one? Let's begin. Let's start by doing some basic library imports. We are going to use Python's famous turtle module for simple graphics, and we will be using NumPy for generating number sequences and the time module to give us a little break when the program is running. Now the goal is to draw a heart dynamically on the screen, and possibly to put in a nicely phrased greeting sentence in the heart. How do we do this? Apparently, we have the great turtle module, freshly imported from line one. The turtle must be traveling along the curves of the heart, such that the turtle's special racing trail can resemble that of a heart shape. But still, how? If you have worked with turtles, you would know that it only travels in straight lines. I mean, at least the turtle library in Python. We would need to first create a turtle object using the creator function turtle dot turtle. Mind you that Python is sensitive to letter cases. The small turtle is the module's name, while the big turtle is the class name. After the turtle me one is spawned, we set the turtle's shape to arrow, or you can use turtle if you like. Set the speed to zero, which means instant. Because we don't really want to watch a turtle race, which is way too slow. And also lift the pen up to prevent from drawing too early. And set color to red. Okay, before we can draw it through the code, we need to draw it by hand. Here's my first try. Not the nicest heart that you can see on the card, but kind of a past message. A heart is a symmetric shape around the vertical line crossing the center. As we can pin this heart onto a coordination system, drawing an X and Y axis over the shape. As the heart is now in four parts, we can tackle them one by one. In the buzzwords of computational thinking, this is called divide and conquer. Look at the top right corner; it looks like a semicircle, isn't it? And the bottom curve looks like something that resembles a square root function. Now, for the slightly more senior audience, we will know that we can draw the semicircle and the square root function by tweaking their respective equations. And let's start by doing the semicircle. The standard semicircle function is x squared plus y squared equals one. If we give it a right shift on the x-axis, and we all know that it will be x minus one squared plus y squared equals one. Okay. And also, we need to use make use of the absolute property to make the whole thing symmetric by adding the absolute value. And Bob's uncle, that's the equation we need. We write that into a function with respect to x, which yields y equals something. Y equals the square root of one minus absolute x minus one squared. Right. So that gives us the symmetric semicircle. And similarly, a square root function can be written like this: y equals minus three times the square root of one minus 
another square root and an x over 2. Right? We're also taking the absolute value of x. Now we have both the functions needed for drawing the heart. Let's call them y1 and y2. It's time to code them up. In Python, we call the first function f1 of x. And it returns, firstly, the square root of something, where the something is 1 minus something else. Where something else is the square of absolute x minus 1. And similarly, we should define the second function, which is called f2 of x. The function returns 3 or minus 3 times 1 minus something, where the minus something is the absolute of x over 2 square root and another square root at the outside of the bracket. Now that we already have the functions at hand, we just need to think how do we actually paint the heart? The first question would be how do you color it? This is because if we just follow the curves, we will only draw the outline and end up with an empty heart. But instead, we want it, we want it to be wholeheartedly colorful. However, using a pen, we can easily paint the inside. But wait, can't we do the same with a computer? By just making use of these points. So we draw it up and down and up and down and up again and down and up and down, oops, down and up and down like this, repeatedly and programmatically. The overall painting direction is from left to the right. You see, we just worked out an algorithm that is a sequence of steps that even our little turtle can cope with. Obviously, we want to write a loop for the ups and down steps. Given the mathematical forms of the functions, we loop over an evenly spaced list of points between minus 2 and positive 2. Here we see the usage of the important, imported numpy module as numpy. The function linear space creates a list of points starting with x equals minus 2. and ending with x equals positive 2. And there will be 100 points generated in between the two points. Overall, the code on line 18 tells us that for each iteration of the loop, the variable x will be assigned a value from the list of numbers between minus 2 and positive 2. Inside the loop, we need to get our beloved y points. First, y1 is equal to f1 of x, and then our me1 turtle goes to x and y1 accordingly. And we put our pen down, ready for drawing. Please note that we have made the x and y values 50 times bigger, respectively. Otherwise, 
the heart will be too small. This is called scaling, and it is a very useful technique when your project requires work into different referencing frames. Now we do the same for Y2 and make ME1 go to Y2. Similarly, the Y2 for Turtle Me1 is also 50 times bigger. Now think with me, what paths are our Turtle Me1 traveling? Me1 is traveling exactly in the zigzags we illustrated here. Because after going to Y2, Me1 is back to the start and it will go to Y1 again. This repeats until X becomes 2. At the end, we just need to hide the painter, lift the pen tip, and voila, we are done. Not hard, isn't it? Testing time. Let's scroll up a bit and click the run button, and it works. Now my hand-drawn heart can retire. Let me wipe it off your screen. More wiping. You will notice the drawing process is like an inkjet printer lying on its side, printing one thin row at a time. Let's run it again. Nice view. Now we've got to the next challenge, which is to put some words into our lovely heart. This will be easier. Have you got a sentence? Well, instead of going wildly creative, I'll just use Happy Valentine's Day for now. I use all capitals for a reason I'll explain later, and I set the turtle's pen color to be white. Okay, I'll lift the pen up here to avoid drawing before I move, but wait. Apparently, I've done it on line 27, so instead I can set the top left corner of the text directly. And I'll just let my little turtle to write the text. Hit run to see the effect. Pretty good, albeit a bit too direct. I want the text to have a dynamic effect, as the heart does. Let's get rid of the right function and be more creative. I want to display the letters in the text one by one character. Hence, I just wrote a loop to go over the letters. For each letter, my turtle does the three following things. Pen down, write the letter, and pen up. Then, the turtle moves on to the next position by adding 8 units to the x-axis denoted by a position 0. This is a fixed offset and it's why we want to use capitals. Before the end of the loop body, we make the program sleep for 0.1 of a second after each letter being displayed. Now hit the run button and see the effect. It works! Apparently we're doing very well. Why don't we be more creative and add a bit more colors to the heart? I mean, literally adding one more color to the top half of the heart. However, I do like the sort of brass effect on our current design which adds a lot of vibrancy to the design. I therefore don't want to create a, a clear edge that cuts the heart into two. That would be truly heartbreaking. But whatever the design, we need to start with defining the two colors. We'll create a list of two colors, red and blue. Can't be simpler. Then define a color index and let it begin with zero. Coming back to the question, 
How are we swapping the colors? A blazingly obvious answer is before we draw the go to function. We want to do exactly that in line 22. Hence, we set the color for our turtle me1 to be chosen from the list colors. Whether it will be red or blue depends on what value does the color index take. The mod operator does that by working out the remainder of a division by 2. If the remainder is 0, then the color is red. And if it is 1, the color is blue. We do the same before drawing to y2. The next thing to consider is where to increment our color index. We need to find a suitable place so our idea of interlacing can actually work as we would like to. Where should it be? How many times should we swap? These are questions to consider. We first try it at the end and run Oops, it seems that we hit a bug. What is it? Let's quickly look at what the error message says. List index out of range on line 21. How could the index be out of range? By looking more carefully, we found that the color index itself has been used as the list index, rather than the color index mode 2, which supposes to give only one, zeros and ones. To fix this bug, I just need to move the mod2 back into the squared bracket. Now we try to run it again. The new result clearly works, but the color interlacing is just a too heavy. In order to color just the top half-ish of the heart, I now change color twice in the loop. And it works. What a nice looking heart. Think about why the visual effect can be like this. Here's a prompt. It goes into how your screen displays smooth curves with only limited pixels. In the remaining time, let's play with our little program a bit more. You see, I have changed the number of points from 100 down to 50. And we actually want to go through three sizes, from 50 to 100, and then to 200. What effect can this change lead to? Have a think. Let's run the program and see if you're right. Apparently, the spaces between lines are increased and the overall color gets lightened. The text also blurred. Let's compare with our original setting with 100 points, which is better in my view. Now we shall see what 200 points will give us. Wow. The brass metal feel is gone, replaced with a very fine shape with colored patterns. Let's take some time to admire our own little program. Congratulations to those of you who have followed me all the way to here. May I wish you a happy Valentine's Day. This is our first Codecast production, so please bear with us for any imperfections. If you happen to like this video, please do comment on our website www.edbr.uk or on YouTube channel EdBridge UK. Thanks for watching, goodbye.